Now that we've seen how to create tempo maps for audio and then manipulate that tempo, let's dig a little deeper and check out some quantization of actual beats within a musical performance. Here's a recording of some multi-tracked drums. We have an accurate tempo map, and if I play the audio back along with the DP click, you can hear that everything is in time. So the tempo is even, but if we look closely, you can see that not all of the individual drum hits are on the sequence grid. The downbeats of the performance map out to the bar lines, but within the bars, the actual performance is kind of sloppy. We see an early hit on this beat, for example. So I'll open the kick track in the waveform editor and ask DP to find the beats in the audio. You can see that DP is being very sensitive about the beats found in the audio, so I'll go to the audio menu and open the beat sensitivity window. This allows me to thin out the found beats in the audio. I really only want to look at quarter or eighth note events in this performance. After I've thinned the beats out with the sensitivity control, I'll just go through the soundbite and do some checking. If I hold down the M key, I get a tool that allows me to enable or disable found beats. This is important because any quantization operations that DP does on the audio will be based on the found beats. Now that I've got a simplified and checked beat map for the kick drum track, I'll select all the audio and choose Copy Beats from the audio menu. I'll choose to copy the beats from the kick track to the rest of the selected audio. This is also an important step because it means that all those audio tracks have the same beat map and will therefore all be quantized exactly the same way. This keeps phase coherence between tracks that contain phase-related audio. Now that I have the same beat map for all selected sound bites, I'll go to the Region menu and choose Quantize. This is the same window we use to quantize MIDI data. I have choices as to what I can quantize, including the beats within the sound bites. This will apply time stretching and compression to the audio so that the audio beats line up with the quantization grid. We can quantize audio beats just like we quantize MIDI notes. I set the quantize grid to eighth notes and hit apply. DP makes new audio that moves the found beats to the specified quantize grid. So now not just the downbeats, but all of the drum hits within the bars are quantized to the sequence grid. Let's listen. If I undo the quantize, you can see that the hits are out of time. If I redo the quantize, you see the drum beats move onto the sequence grid, and that gives us a nice tight playback of the drum part. Now let's try something different. In this next example, I'm going to leave the original drum part unquantized. We've shown how audio beats can be quantized to a grid, but what if we like the live feel of the performance and just want to tighten up other instruments to the imperfect but musical groove? I've recorded a bass guitar onto an audio track, and I've recorded MIDI notes that trigger a shaker sound. I want to get the audio of the bass part and the MIDI percussion parts to be locked up with the original drum part. Here are the drums, bass, and MIDI shaker parts. The MIDI notes have been hard quantized to the sequence grid. The parts are basically in time, but they are not locked together. Let's fix that. I'll use the track selector to hide all the tracks except the kick drum. I'll select the entire length of the kick part. Because this is a live performance, the feel can change at any point. Therefore, the groove quantized template that I make is based on a specific time range selection. I'll go to the region menu and choose Create Groove. I'll name the new groove quantized template. You can see I've already got a few other groove templates that have been created. For the new groove, I'll choose an eighth note resolution. I'll click OK, close the window, and save the changes. Now let's take a look at the bass guitar track. I'll command double click on the bass soundbite to open it in the waveform editor. I'll select all and find beats in the selection. 
DP is very sensitive about the found beats, so I'll go to the audio menu and select Adjust Beat Detection. This window gives me a slider that allows me to thin out the found beats. This is important because DP is going to quantize the bass track based on the beats found in the audio. Once the beat map is cleaned up, I'm ready to do that quantization. I'll display the MIDI track with the shaker along with the audio bass track. DP allows me to quantize audio beats and MIDI notes with a single operation. I'll choose Groove Quantize from the Region menu, and there is the new template I just created. For this example, I only want to quantize timing, so I've set the velocity and duration sliders to off. I'm quantizing based on an eighth note grid. I'll hit Apply, and DP quantizes both the MIDI notes and the audio beats of the bass track. Now when I zoom in, you can see that the MIDI notes and bass notes are not exactly on the sequence grid, but if we compare them to the kick drum, they are lined up to that performance. So now when I play the track back, the bass and shaker are not metronomically exact, but they are tightly lined up with the original drums. That preserves the human feel and still gives a tight performance for the overall track. I'll zoom back down and undo the quantize. With no quantizing, you can see the MIDI notes are on the sequence grid, but not matching the drum part. With the groove quantize applied, you see the MIDI notes and the bass notes lined up with the drums. So what we've done here is create a quantized template based on an actual musical performance and applied that to both audio and MIDI tracks in the DP sequence. The groove quantize template could be created from an audio or MIDI performance and then applied to both audio and MIDI data. That's a clear example of how to work with quantization of individual audio beats as well as MIDI events in Digital Performer.